All right, I think that's it for the side quest for right now, yeah? Head back into the underground real quick. Just take a quick... Uh, uh, I think uh, that's over to the right. Little... Oh, right? That was to the left. Oh, no, the moon was to the left, right. Uh, yeah, to, to the right, then. This way? Uh, still... Oh, it's all over here. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's in, it's in the cave. Let me check that off. Oh. Uh, there's only the one. Pretty sure. Yeah, I suppose so. Still gonna have to check every time they drop a new batch, but I think there's a maximum of only two side quests in this area in the whole game. What would a human be doing in a place like this? Hope there's still a Oh, I didn't even read a prompt. Oh, well. Uh, rescue mission. Okay. Ooh, the platforming's back. I like how sometimes there's a drop shot of points, but it's like one of those ones where it's only like parallel to your distance. It's a being like an actual drop, drop shadow. All right, let's see. He makes it sound like uh, like he's going to enjoy the platforming until he gets to the mountain. We, yeah. Well, I mean, I know what to look for for that, so maybe this will be a bit easier. Also, I'm in a Mario mood as of like I should talk about that, shouldn't I? You should also place uh, Super Mario Land 2004 and 2008 uh, ROM hacks of. Uh, Mar I'm sorry, uh, fan games <laughs> that put Marisa in Super Mario World type uh, play. Yeah, that sounds, 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 sounds fun, actually. There's also a Splinter Cell one that's 2D and uses Rainbow. And there's also uh, Mega Mari. The moral of the story is that we're not running out of Toa content anytime soon, so we definitely need to pace ourselves a bit. <laughs> Those are the old, old, old games, the ones that go back to before the series had its uh, currently defined identity. Really? Uh, you're uh, not I can't go that, that way. way. Uh, also, just notice, don't no radar. Fuck. Before uh, how far back? Before they told their first over. Uh, before they told their first overarching story. <sighs> okay, so I was that was so weird. So I was jumping, but I was also holding the dash button. So my dash engaged in the air, so I got extra boost of speed out of that. That was hilarious. Yeah, the momentum is not great. It I mean, also it, feels a lot of the times like you stop for a second. You're gonna you're gonna drop like a rock. Yeah. So I guess I'll go over my story really fast. I had this recent epiphany that actually blew me that actually uh bothered me a little bit. Sorry, one second. I, okay. We are in Seafloor Cavern. Uh you don't remember. Mario sixty four? No. Which Pokemon one? Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Oh. This is the uh this is basically Oh the yeah, yeah, okay, the woodboards, right. Yeah, this is sort of like the pattern for uh the tidal wave. That they have there in the rooms when you're trying to get to either Kyogre or Groudon. Yeah, true. I've a uh, pattern just uh, is is probably very different, but it's just uh, similar looking enough to be very amusing to me and probably. <laughs> no, I can I can kind of see it. Uh, even though I've only only very rarely get to the end game, or I only very rarely get to those areas specifically because you can't revisit those rooms. I if I remember correctly. You can go back there. Yeah, no, you can definitely go back there. There's just not anything to do there. Yeah. Uh, once you already been there once. Yeah, whenever I think of uh, Gen 3 uh, dungeons, my, the first ones that come to mind, obviously, are Sky Pillar. And obviously, weirdly enough, Seafoam Caverns. Uh, Seafoam uh, is from Gen 1, but uh, Fire Red. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I think of the one that, like, the uh, platforms raise and lower, depending on the tide that's currently in. Oh. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Um... It's like one of the earliest places you can get a uh, spiel. I think it's the only place you can get spiel. Um, yeah, no. Uh, that was weird. I never once actually... Uh, I didn't realize until way later that it was literally just a time of day thing because it is the tide. Yeah. Deep Sea Shoals? I believe it was called Shoals. Maybe. Uh, this isn't going to drop my... I am dropping below. No. It's going to drop it to 18, so it's going to be a... Uh, okay, I can take that. Uh, a loss of 20%. I'll take that. That's fine. As long as it exists. Uh, hello. Uh, this is a rescue mission. Yeah. So there's not a boss in it again. So uh, I guess to get on that uh, talk really fast. Uh, oh, a couple. Funny that. Um, I had a recent epiphany. I kind of bobbing a little bit. And it's actually a little, little bit of a fire under my ass. I came to realize that there's way more Mario games I have nearly beaten than have actually beaten. I showed you the tier list while I was mapping out. The ratio was like... Five fully completed, seven nearly completed. The ones that come on top of my head are, even though I just recently beat one of them, is like Luigi's Mansion with and Paper Mario one. Not kidding about that. Yeah, no, I know exactly what that's like. Uh, head back to the store first. 
because next yeah, one will, we, be a, will be a proper uh, story mission. I also need to cash in these stones as well. Yeah. No, I know exactly what that's like. If I did that, mm. it would... The specific games would probably be different, but... Yeah, the, I have a lot of uh, Mario games especially where it's like, oh, this is fun. I play it for anywhere from one to three hours and then never touch it. Yeah, for, for me, it's more so because of my damn step siblings when I was younger. They would uh, break the or lose a lot of games I had. You have no idea the, the hundreds of dollars of potential sales of GameCube games I used to have that I could have cashed in on by now. God damn it. Yeah, uh, no, I understand what that's like. Yeah, so I recently started taking an, an endeavor. Also, when I realized that Super Mario Wonder came out, I literally did not hear about that whatsoever. I'm like, you know what? Also, Simple Flips is playing a lot of old Mario games right now to try them out for the first time. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to try it for myself. So I beat Mario Land 1. Uh, that took some safe state abuse, but it's pretty cool. Mario Land 2 was another one where I'd almost beat the game when I was younger, but never beat the final boss, go figure. And now I'm working on Mario 3D Land. So that's probably why I'm a little accustomed to platforming right now, because uh, I got some experience under my belt. Second capture. You're yes. all good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Super Mario 3D Land is a great game. A lot of people give it uh, some shit because it was the first of uh, the hybrid gameplay. To be perfectly honest, I actually think I like it more than 3D World, at least the first time I played this world. The Switch version made uh, enough improvements to 3D World to make it a proper 8 or 9 out of 10, but when I first played it, I probably would have given that a 6. Uh, 3D Land for me is, all, is also like an 8 by default. It goes in, in context of actually playing it on a handheld, but I think uh, the way it plays and the level design, just the harm of it all, is pretty delightful. Yeah, uh, I was fairly unimpressed by like the first two worlds, but then I got to World 3 with the, the desert, and it literally opens with like a giant pillar going upwards that you can kind of go in like a lot of different orders. I'm like, this is all right. I'm kind of impressed now. Also, it comes with the added context of Nintendo being like, we can do 3D on a handheld. For real this time, we swear, we promise. <laughs> yeah, it's not all red. You're not, not literally going to go blind, guys. I promise. Pink, pinky promise. No, no, no. no. Uh, Mario 64 3D. Or not uh, DS. Oh, yeah. No, we, we swear. We're actually 3D. See, we have this stick that's not just a set of buttons that can actually move in three dimensions. I promise. Yeah, it's very funny. Uh, I will say it's very cute uh, playing it on emulator because obviously it was meant to fully take advantage of the 3D element of 3DS because... I can tell from the amount of uh, top-down views it's given me. There are no, you go into the puzzle room sometimes, and they have the thing that literally says, That's turn, turn your slider yeah. to 3D. You won't be able to solve this puzzle without uh, putting the slider in. It's very cute seeing that also, and just being like, yeah, it, it's just very funny that the 3DS was one of the best-selling consoles of all time, purely in spite of the 3D aspect. <laughs> like, uh, I'm going to take that as a shiggy uh, decision with that one, because the man loves himself some gimmicks. Yeah, absolutely does. Yeah. They pretty much went on record as saying, hey, why don't you uh, make new installments in series that has, haven't gotten them in a while? If we don't have a new or interesting idea for it, it doesn't seem worth it. We don't want to just keep repeat, uh, repeating the same things we've already done before. So that's why you hear things about uh, why they haven't made an F0 in 20 years. We don't have any ideas for it, and we don't want we don't want Sega to make it because we don't want them to get the credit. <laughs> because Sega made the GameCube one. Yeah, I know. That's, our That's some real Metroid Prime vibes right there. Can I say point that out right now? Oh, oh yeah, no. Like uh, the classic. Uh, uh, Sak Jap Sakamoto was a douche. Sakamoto is a, is a fucking cunt of a human being, and he's so mad. Retro Studios made a banger Metroid game. He made his he made his one bad on purpose because he was upset that people liked the uh, the one that was made by Americans. See, I don't think that necessarily, but there's probably elements of that that tried to directly make Metroid Prime non-canon. I find it to be very fucking funny. Yeah, no, none of those other ones happened. This one happened immediately after Metroid 2. Yep, I swear, guys, nothing else happened in between, Samus. Uh, we went right from Metroid 2 to Super Metroid, and then right to this wonderful game. Nothing bad happened, guys. Right. And then just proceeds to ignore that with Metroid 5, Metroid Dread. Metroid, yeah, seriously, it's like... I, I generally don't think... I'd say it's about Japanese businessmen as a whole, but also just in general about Nintendo. I don't think they understand the, the idea of... If it ain't broke, don't fix it, or don't try to reinvent the wheel. See, they're okay with uh, foreigners developing that game because the foreigners that developed that game weren't American. They, uh, they were from Spain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dread, right. Mercury Steam. Yeah. 
Because they also did the 3DS remake of Metroid 2. Yeah, those filthy Americans uh, aren't going to get their hands on us. We're going to give it to the Spanish instead. Okay, <laughs> I see how it is. Japan loves their Central Europe. Yeah, they really do. They love their Italy, France, Spain. I literally could call, tell that at a glance also because of uh, Namco giving, having a lot more PR stuff with uh, Europe than America. Yeah. Trust me, I've noticed. And in some cases, depending on the series, uploading their trailers and whatnot to European accounts way ahead of American accounts. Yep. Also, One Piece. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't literally anything One Piece. I'm going to bring us completely full circle. Oh my god, how are you going to pull that one off? Is this something involving Zune? No, uh, no, uh, Bamco and, ah. um, not this game, but the original. Do you remember that, uh, when I, uh, talked about something maybe possibly controversial with the last one involving Bamco? No, I don't remember that, actually. When I was talking about the then upcoming Tales of Berseria. Oh, yes, okay, I think I might know what you're talking about. Tales of Berseria, how... Like the trailer initially got released in subs. Uh, I think someone asked someone about them, and they're, they're like, "We we like to show off the game in its uh, intended format." As in, you just don't watch all the dubs, really. On okay, guys. Oh, that was me, and um, yeah, that was um, that uh, they're the only English trailer they made, which wasn't a trailer. It was just a, a like a seven minute cutscene video that released like a week before uh, the game came out was uploaded only to their European account, not to their American account. Yeah. Which is funny because you'd think if you if it, you had any excuse to upload Japanese, not English footage, it would be to Europe where you have to worry about eight languages, not just the one American, which is just English. Yeah. But also, yeah, that was when they were like, um, we're category, uh, we're, um, Pandering to uh, the widest demographic, which is people that uh, that aren't going to play with English, like decidedly that is not true. Alter they screamed the loudest, as with inter with uh, altercations I had in that comment thread uh, through the uh, through the Bamco Europe rep, but that is decidedly not true. Losers. <clears throat> Literally, one of them was a uh, was a uh, anime song fan dubber. Like you are literally the last person who has <laughs> any, who has any right to make a statement about a uh, dub. <laughs> like, bro, how are you so cucked? How are you so blind that you don't see the irony in you uh, covering songs in English and then saying English dub bad? Yeah, sir. Yeah, genuinely. This is going pretty smoothly. Hell yeah. Oh. But that hasn't been a uh, as much of a problem with the one Tales game they've released since we played Scarlet Curiosity back in 2016. Hey, did we mention that in like two weeks it's going to be 2024? No, but... Whoa, whoa, dude, Matrix! Oh, this is, this is one of my favorites. It warped. I posted that to Twitter because that was so funny the first time seeing it just, uh... The, um... I didn't, I didn't. Around. I did. I did not know that uh, Girls on Panda was in town. This is pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, I know this same tank was also in Rain, but it's still very funny. I don't think we fought it as a formal boss. Just as oh, we did. a thing that was in. Uh, there was a mini boss in some of the stages in the, uh, the outside world. But funny that uh, a tank should come up now, with uh, the year 2016 being mentioned because. There is an anime currently airing called 16-Bit Sensation, which I think is about, uh, I haven't seen it, about uh, someone trying to get into game development, and then looking on, there's one scene where they're looking back on uh, as one of the best years of their childhood as they're wandering around Akiba, and it's like, what famous things were happening at the time that we could reference? Uh, a Girl Zone Panzer movie, uh, Persona 5 that just came out in Japan, and Love Live Sunshine. Oh, this one, yeah. I was watching um, Trash Taste the other, the other day with Taylor, and that did come up. That actually seemed pretty cool. I mean, it's like, I, it, it panned to a shot of like all the old stuff on the wall. I'm like, I know almost every single one of these fucking arrows. Jesus Christ. What yeah, is wrong with me? That too. And then someone being like, How could she win against a tank? Very carefully. And then having the, bring it back around, having the uh, Sanae Boomer moment where, What do you mean you're nostalgic for 2016? 
<laughs> what do you mean you're nostalgic for 2016? Well, 2016 was just like three years ago, guys. <laughs> the passage of time is fake and not real and gay. I've been saying that forever. Uh, we are heading up the mountain. You don't need to bother checking every time because oh, individual I'm... stages only give you like six at a time. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm getting so a little antsy with that. Yeah, it only gives you enough. Uh, story me... missions only give you enough for a single upgrade at a time. It's side quests that give you enough for free upgrades. Yeah, I think that one was just fucking with my sense of time also because I didn't realize that. Yeah, we spent that a good that few was, minutes That was there. a longer level, yeah. All right, let's You see. were in the wrong area. I decidedly am. It's you need to go down to... here. Yeah, down into the... Woo. There we go. Yeah, they kind of fuck with you a little in this. All right. Oh, we're back. Yep, we're back in um, Arsenal gear. Yeah. I was going to say tanker. Uh, almost. No. Uh, Arsenal gear is a tanker, I'm pretty sure. I thought it had a specific... No, uh, maybe? No, I, I'm pretty sure the whole tanker was actually just Arsenal gear because it's so fucking massive and underwater. Do you think we could just confirm that the guys who develop these games are definitely Metal Gear Solid fans? Because, definitely. like, the more I'm looking at it, it's like, we just had soldiers also that were Kappas and holding guns. Um, yeah, they're definitely some sort of fans of Metal Gear. I think we could confirm that definitively. Please be a little more specific than just New York City, guys. For the setting. Yeah, I don't remember if it was yeah, a particular name. Anyway, the sick music's back. Hell yeah. Yeah. Go level up meter to Yay. How, what do we got? Oh, even wider. Hell yeah. Anyway, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 reference. So we're going to have the weird ass libertarians in comments uh, mentioning how uh, internet censorship uh, and Hideo Kojima literally Big saw it. Big Shell. Oh, fuck. It was Big Shell. Right. It was called the Big Shell Incident, too. Damn. Yeah. Damn I was going to say, no, it wasn't just the tanker, because that was the place you spent the first hour of snake. Reimu, we managed to avoid drowning. Good work, Marissa. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I guess in this case, it would be more like, um, uh, Renosuke, we managed to avoid drowning. He, <laughs> uh, he's the guy on our comms, and for Rainbow's route, <laughs> it would be, um, Kosuzu. Oh, yeah, right. Sudoreko is our uh, EE. All right, yeah, careful, boys. We gotta watch out for any bisexual men w with uh, knives, aka uh, any <laughs> me on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. All right, oh, this look like I can go this way. Go figure. But no, genuinely, this does look a lot like our um, not big so shell. Big shell, yeah. And I guess kind of uh, mother. With a couple of areas, you can actually walk around it. Uh, yeah, I see a little bit. I do see it. Some of the other platforms, like if you. Walk around the outside of uh, the zoo platform. Oh, yeah, yeah. I uh, always wanted to explore more of uh, Mother Base in 5, but there was just never really a lot of attention to it, and it took forever. Did you ever actually max out your Mother Base and get it so that it's like four miles apart? I know I got close. Um, I've I've done like two or three save files for it before, and I know I got pretty close with both of them. Ow. Yeah, it's something else if you try to actually walk end to end to end. Yeah, no, we uh we always take the the vehicles and cr and crank a uh, tank on me. Uh, good stuff. So that's why he's called Vamp. No, actually, because he's bisexual. <laughs> no, actually, it's just he's bisexual. <laughs> me not knowing what the fuck that has to do with being called Vamp. It means uh, you do both. Yeah, I don't get it. Which, I'm, I'm um, not sure how that word came about with that phrasing, but okay. Oh, wait, hang on. Hel not Hello? Is there anything that's going to pop up over here? Yeah. Uh, it's not going to be on the other side. There's more in there. More uh, crates for you to climb. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I hope we circle back around. Boom! Nice. You do, because this is just a... Speaking of, though, uh, it's a couple of months out of date now, but... Something they've been having other members of the team do lately is another set of uh, employees at TFS have recently been playing uh, the Metal Gear Saga with uh, 1, 2, and 3. Really? Yeah, they did this actually way back in 2017 or 2018. Because they're like, hey, we're going to do a big streaming project since we stream three days a week. Pick, uh, pick something for us to do. The whole Metal Gear series, the whole uh, Castlevania series, or the whole Kingdom Hearts series. 
and Metal Gear won first, and then that was so long that they never did any of the other projects. Oh, no. But they got through all of Metal Gear, they got all the way through to Phantom Pain from MSX. Well, that's strange. You see the thing? I shot Magic Missile twice. Wait yeah. a minute. How the hell did I do that? I think it's based on how many times you have it. Oh, no, it is, it, it is just upgraded to fire twice now. Yeah. Okay, it's kind of cool. I'll have to uh, dig, uh, dodge the digger. I had to be very careful with my wording there. And on the current swath of people that are currently playing through, uh, they occasionally have some of the other guys that did it before sit in again on some of the streams. And they just wrapped up Snake Eater. And in one of them, uh, Scott came in, uh, came in to sit in for the last 15, uh, for the last 20 minutes of one of their sessions. Yeah. And uh, it was the bit where you're dressed up as Raiden. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, where you get caught, and the boss walks in and rips uh, the mask off your face, and God is just stunned silent when she says, what is this fairy disguise? It'll rub off on you. <laughs> I didn't catch that fucking line from her, my God. He's just sat in stunned silence for like a minute watching <laughs> that. It's like, what time is this supposed to be? Uh, 64. Yeah, okay. Hey, for 64, <laughs> uh, they could have said way worse. Yeah, they could have. I'd say, but I don't, the game impression didn't really start until the 80s, so I guess it could have been, it could have been not worse, I don't know. Hey, so you remember that time a couple of weeks ago where I forgot what game we were recording where we were telling uh, personal stories? Yeah, I think it was actually, was to, no, what the hell are we recording four weeks ago? Was it Yohane? Uh, oh yeah, no, it was. It, it was uh, the Yohane game. So seeing that scene where, uh, they were stunned by the boss uh, uh, calling Snake a fagaloon. Uh, brought back uh, brought back memories of my childhood, where my dad used to own an Italian restaurant until I was seven. Oh yeah, and uh, the, uh, the he had a, a a cook in the kitchen. He would only refer to them by one name, and I never learned his real name. Oh no, what was the name? He called him Fairy. All things considered, for your dad, I expected worse. I mean, he has to keep the guy working for him. Yeah. Yeah. But this was the 90s, though, so I guess the worst of the gay panic was behind us. It wasn't raining yeah, anymore. It, w it was not, like, real. It, was, it wasn't fully accepted. I think it was more tolerated by people. Uh, But, yeah. How do I put this? It was a different time. It was it was a period of time where everyone was okay. No, actually, there is a ramping up and down. You can say for it. It was a period where people was homophobic instead of genocidal. Ah, that yeah, that's fair. Because I, I think uh, the, the Reagan era was genocidal. I think the wording you'd probably want to go with is like more mis like it was okay. I think unfortunately the term used by a Bush administration, "Don't ask, don't tell," was kind of applying there. I thought that was Clinton. No, that was uh, more so Bush because it needed more military dudes going into Iraq. Ah. And so it was like, do we do we ostracize the gays or do we actually get more people uh, feeling the military industrial complex to uh, keep feet in, in Iraq? Wait, was that don't say gay? Don't say gay or don't ask, don't tell. Those are two different. Uh, don't ask, don't tell specifically. That, that I know for a fact was Bush. Which one was uh, don't say gay? Uh, oh no, you that might have actually been Reagan. Now I think about it, because of the deliberate downplaying and dodging of the AIDS ep epidemic. Yeah, you just went in a circle. This time, I think you're gonna want to go yeah, to the right. I think you're right. It's a, it's okay that we're being political because you see, we're playing as a female character, which is apparently political. Yeah, right. No, we, we can't be playing as strong women. Uh, although, oh no, uh, no. Also. I'm not playing as a literal like five foot ten, uh, huge stack, uh, big titty mommy right now. So it's it's immediately uh political, and you should not be playing this. And also, it's gay. Also, by that metric, because there's two uh, 250 women and only like three known males, everyone is inherently gay. So it's inherently political. Yeah, right. It's like no, they all have to reproduce somehow. Says the weirdo in the comment section. <laughs> Where the fuck am I? Ah. Uh, to the right. Let's yeah, let's try that this time. I remember I, I did find a corridor before, but now it's getting a little winding in. What hence 
proof positive that really this game series needs a fucking overhead map. Wait, no, this is towards the entrance. You went backwards. I feel like we're going towards the entrance right now. Shit. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, that's what that, that happened to me a handful of times here, where you have the room that has uh, four entrances and exits. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna go to left this time. No. That. Yeah. Down. No, I think this is the And then go down, down right. Oh, yeah, okay. This might bring us outside, maybe. Yes. Yeah, okay. So that broke this. Come down here. This is very non intuitive. Also, it's not giving us. um are level for that. Holy shit. Uh, it's also not really telling us directly what's what, so this is very funny. Also, go back up a little. Uh, How far back up? Uh, Start of this room. Uh, back One down. more. One go more. Back, uh, to the room we were just in. The hallway we were just in down it's a uh, really funny seeing the cutoff for the oh, black yeah. void there huh and uh how you don't see any more wall yeah um small development team i'm going to look i'm going to look past that I'll i don't have any problems with it i just think it's funny where you can see yeah the scene. oh yeah no it is very funny god damn that's a huge hitbox now one thing i've i've noticed just in general and this is just passive knowledge i've noticed from watching a lot of mods for uh games especially mario 64 is that Cameras are are fucking nightmare to work with in game development. Oh yeah, like especially Mario sixty four. Like <laughs> it's so notoriously bad, and a lot of developers, like modders, want to install like inside areas, but the camera is so horrid trying to deal with that. So they'll be like, uh, yeah, just keep it a Mario view for this section coming up, or like um, they'll redo the camera themselves and try an angle to make it work. It's and I just come to realize that yeah, doing camera work in a three D game is a fucking hassle. Well, so I'm gonna cut, gonna cut that game some slack. It was the first true 3D game. Yeah, definitely. And also, it was also the first camera in a video game. It is literally the reason why we call it a camera, because in order for it to make sense to the person playing, they literally had a camera posed in front of the screen. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not taking away from it at all. It's just funny to think about giving that perspective. That yeah, like universally, it seems like trying to work cameras in a 3D game is an absolute nightmare. If I still right, had. A to provide context for uh, the younger audience, yeah, that, that is literally the reason why we use the terminology. I don't actually think that was the reason why I used it. I thought it was just like a good analogy. We just stuck with it. As as no, is often the case, anyway. They have uh, lack of two on the camera. Yeah, I know. I didn't think that, that's where our terminology actually directly came from. They needed it to make sense to the person playing why you're able to the, switch the, angles. Yeah, because you weren't able to do that in any game prior. But you didn't have that much perspective. Like, I think Crash 1 might have come out before 64, but that's a straight game with a, yeah. game with a camera that doesn't move. It's, uh, once again, a static camera, so they can utilize that as they will. Uh, straight or right? Uh, go to the right. Yeah, I'm feeling that too. Um, one, I do sometimes regret deleting my Twitter profile, and one of the reasons being is because I actually did have a Toho uh, game developer follow me. I'm not kidding about <laughs> I'm not joking about that. He was working on, I think, uh, like a top-down like strategy based toho game oh cool yeah he he was actually a pretty cool guy i uh wish i got uh gone wait was that the uh the guy that was banking the total war game um maybe i actually don't immediately remember offhand i know he posted uh demos a lot for his stuff though i probably cool. should have gotten in touch with him more but anyway um i would i should probably have uh picked his brain a little bit being like hey yeah uh so is it true what they say about like camera develop uh camera angles in games just being a fucking nightmare uh, he probably would have said yes but anyway how do oh there you are <laughs> hiding actually in my metal gear game <laughs> yeah no camera is always fucky like if you look at any of the top down zelda games you can actually see that it's not a straight uh bottom up angle it's like a 70 per uh, 70 degree angle Ooh. pointing uh slanted down in order to achieve the top down effect you can actually still see your characters yeah because there are actually camera hacks in the 3ds uh zelda do that don't go into get shit i uh, hit no and then walk behind it oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay I remember seeing a lot of these uh, actually just straight up appearing treasure chests in your run. Weird. Because I saw one in, uh, earlier in the Hell River level. Only like one or two of them, uh, just I think. I guess I found both of them. <laughs> Alright. Zeke? <laughs> oh no, just the uh, death, uh, death Egg again. Wait, no, it's uh, not the Death Egg. What the hell? Egg Robo? 
What what were the one was he was piloting in Sonic Two? De- yeah, the Death Egg. No, I thought the Death Egg was the name of the like the actual uh, Death Star he was making. Uh, Death Egg Robot. Maybe. Anyway, this could be pretty easy. I was gonna say something like, uh, I don't know, Pupa, Animal Pod. Now nah, looking at this now, I'm actually getting more. Still getting Mega Man Legends vibes with this. All right. So is this considered a bomb? And can I hit them? No. Nah. I did the very end though. Oh, it is the Death Egg Robot. Okay. Yep. Uh, these are generally easier to fight though because they're way bigger, way yeah, slower, it's huge, and way dumber. Slow. Um. Not hitting me that hard because I've been on top of the stack growth, so doing pretty okay there. Oop. And suddenly I'm eating shit. Hang on. What is this midi? Oh, but I dig it. Ah, don't have uh, Now we're back in the tech, in, uh, the tech now. It's like alternating. It's really cute. Fuck. They're copying you with that attack. You are kind of right, actually. I was trying to see if I could run to the tight circle. I actually uh, could get wrapped back around. All right, there we go. Wait, please hit. I'm pretty sure it's going to hit. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Is that dead? Oh, no. It's going to be close. 2,000. Oh, close to 2,000. Very close. Again, as you knock them past a certain threshold and they automatically go into bomb. Yeah, I know. I got to say, I'm glad I'm doing better at these than I thought I was going to. Again, it's a case where uh, there we go. you take a couple of minutes to get into the pattern, and then it becomes the, pretty much a cinch. Yeah. Oh, that's holding for a while. Mm. And now you defeat my prize robot. Don't worry, Nitor. That just means you, you, you need to download our specs so you can create a uh, Robo Marissa. <laughs> Did I intentionally break the Great Hawk Rate Barrier? Is that, was that actually what happened? Uh, no, they're talking about how, um, Sumerako got in. Outside world, so you turn a blind eye to it. Huh. Who's Yakumo again? Sorry. Ah, that's very funny. Yeah, they're like, you guys can study it if you want. You won't be able to destroy it, so if you want to learn how it works, go ahead, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, they just get, we get free rent to go check out the outside world. That's very funny. They're also providing maintenance and security for it, since they are... Yeah. Since they technically have weaponry and thus could be considered as a standing army. This is true. As much as that matters, since most people can fight for themselves. Alright, Marissa, now I just hope you have a return route uh, figured out for this, though. 